Paneloids Podcast. That's right. Home of the guys that spend way too much money on comics. That's right. I am Pierre, and this is... Oh. How's that for energy, huh? Well, I took a new pre-workout today, and mm. that's probably where my energy is coming from. It's very explosive. Speaking of things that I've been doing, I got to say, this was probably the most fun on whatnot that I actually had. Be the King 24. So his kind of show that he does is comic book baseball. He puts up a comic book. It's a $6 bid. A cool little cover. The main thing is behind that cover is a sticker, potentially, that moves you to the next base. And then you get like a 1 in 50, 1 in 30 gets the number on a select few comics. I joined it. Thought it was cool. I searched eBay and I actually remember Go Collect. So I checked that price and I said, okay, cool. It's a $6 book. It's worth maybe a little bit more. No big deal. Bid one, and it just so happened that I hit a double. So I got to go twice. So my first try, I went for Wolverine 88, which is the first battle of Wolverine and Deadpool, which is like a hot, hot book right now. So he had one. I had a bid between 1 and 30. It was 16 and hit. Random number and worked out. I think his show is cool. I think it's fun, but I got lucky. You know, really when it came down to it. The gambling element has amped it up even farther. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. The <laughs> adrenaline starts going. But like I said, I had a huge win, Wolverine 88. And I got to try again at another cover, which he had like a few. He had Secret Wars number eight. He had a bunch of things. You know what I like it for? Ryan Stegman does it, and he sketches live on it, and you're bidding on it while he's sketching it. And the bidding stops as soon as he's done sketching. Can we talk about eBay, though? I know for a fact that you have been burned before with it. Yeah, I think the worst burn was I bought a Venom first appearance that was supposed to be near mint. I graded it and found it a year later that it was actually restored. Oh. So I came back with a purple label because somebody painted it. They did a damn good job. No way. Restored. Let's get into the good stuff, though. So we talked comic book. We talked about my spending problems. Let's give the people what they're really here for. Not my debt. So... You're the only one of the co-hosts that actually watched Rings of Power. And I'm so grateful because I fucking adore this show. And I know it didn't go over that well on the internet. And I got outshined by House of Dragons and the weird incest shit. But whether the internet shit on it or not, Amazon went all in. Because they know it's the biggest franchise they own. They already renewed it for five more seasons. No way. Yeah, so... Five seasons? I'm good. Now, will the last few flake off and have lower budgets? Maybe. But it was the most beautiful, yes, it was slow, but it felt like Lord of the Rings. It was not better than the movies, obviously, because you're not telling, like, the best stories of Tolkien. But it was very well done. The characters, you know, some of them took a little while to grow on me, but some of them, fantastic. Overall, I give it a 9 out of 10, just to start with that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Honestly, I'd go as far as give it a 10 out of 10. Completely different from how I felt about she (laughs) No, honestly, this show was just, like, captivating. Like, every episode was really well done. It was very captivating. It had me going. I wanted to see more. It definitely had twists and turns that I didn't expect. I guess we can go into it. If you haven't watched the show at this point, that's on you. Here's spoilers, because we're going to focus on the last episode. The Stranger and Sauron. I kind of called the wizard i think it's gandalf that's the only thing that necessarily makes sense you know him following his nose and stupid little callbacks i guess the original lord of the rings so i guess this is just him starting out and sauron didn't see that happening at all nope that was a big like what the fuck the weird pale people is what threw me off so much and then i looked into it i was like okay that makes it cooler so they thought quote unquote gandalf right the stranger If he's not Gandalf, he's some other sorcerer in a sense. It has to be Gandalf. It just doesn't make any sense. Saruman, the other wizard, when they had their big fight and everything, he was like, oh, you were supposed to do great things and da 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 Like, you know, he was talking shit to him. So I think this is what he meant. He didn't really talk much, didn't do anything really, but like kill some bugs and lift some heavy stuff. Then the pale people, when they finally attacked, which I thought they were going to have a bigger role throughout the season from the previews, but they didn't. Which was fine, because they really creeped me out, if I'm being honest. But they thought he was Sauron. And I was like, okay, they're literally telling us, and then he wasn't. So then I did a little research, especially after we found out that the king was Sauron, which was the craziest twist. I didn't even think for one second. I knew something was up when they were making the rings, because he was really into it. I thought maybe the elf was getting paid off by some orc, because it was a little funky. The way they were acting about the rings, they were too excited. But apparently they're both, I think it's Maya, is their race. Okay. 
we'll let the chat destroy us. No big deal. Yeah, that's why they were confused. So whatever powers they have, it's all similar. They live for a really fucking long time. And they come from the stars. It makes it so much cooler to me that both Gandalf and Sauron are the same godlike race. Mm -hmm. And we never knew that. That alone, to me, makes this fucking show have such a future. Now. Because at first, it was just building. We're just waiting for certain characters to overlap. And then the second to last and last episode was like, holy shit, this is the reminder that this is Lord of the Rings. This is not just yeah. a story in Middle Earth. This is the actual beginning. And then when they were making the rings, oh, let's make a crown. And they're like, oh, it's got to be smaller. Like, it was so gradually well-paced that mm -hmm. I think the first half of the season was a little slow. But it was so worth it. I love the callbacks, or I guess call forwards, yeah. to all the uh, Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, and uh, all the different elements. Aragorn's there. I don't know if you realize that or not. I didn't catch any of these Easter eggs. I gotta be honest, if you could tell me as many as you know. So, I didn't know them either. Jenny is really good at this stuff. Mm, she okay. has a great memory when it comes to this stuff. She knows the names, everything. Aragorn, his dad is the young kid that they left behind. Remember uh, the captain? Yeah, yeah, the captain's like, oh, my son's all upset. I personally think the horse is going to find him oh, yeah. somehow. They're going to yeah. join together. And yeah, he's Aragorn's dad. That's so. cool. That's where that future is. The other thing is the dwarf that's friends with the elf. First off, that elf is the elf from Lord of the Rings. Mr. Anderson, whatever his name is. That's him? That's him young. It's a completely different personality. But that's him when he was young. He sees some shit, that's for sure, because yeah. it's a different personality. And you remember the elf that she's like, oh, you are going to see evil. Like She like, has a freak out moment because they show her the ring. That from the original? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's Thandriel or whatever. That's her? Yeah. No way. Elves live forever. That's pretty nutty. Yeah, so that's why she has that freak out moment, because she is reiterating all the stuff that Sauron told her. Right. Like, you would have had a wife, all this shit, whatever. Oh, man. Yeah. See, if people knew this, though, the excitement would be there even more so. And I think people do know it. I think people wanted it done a different way i think it just comes down to you're never going to make everyone happy you know just like how us with marvel we expect right. it to follow a certain path because this is what was written the other thing was yeah the dwarf right. he's gimli's dad yeah so gimli and his brother run across so that's like gimli get back in yeah i will say the dwarven kingdom Gave me such World of Warcraft nostalgia. Oh, really? World of Warcraft is called Iron Forge. It almost looked like fucking Iron Forge. Really? I wish there was more dwarves and just more of that story and it was somehow expanded and they somehow did leave their city underground. And I kind of caught them a few times because if you look at the soldiers, they're in these stiff, stupid kind of helmets where they can't turn their necks. Mm -hmm. That was saving time. And that <laughs> was a little irritating to me because the city felt underpopulated. Mm -hmm. And it was such a cool thing to see. I just wish it felt more alive. And it kind of made it feel claustrophobic in the way that they kind of went low budget with them. Even though it wasn't, kind of felt that way because it wasn't enough interaction in, in dwarves. Outside of that one scene where they're hammering the fucking rock, which wasn't my favorite, but I get it. Yeah, they like hammering rocks. They hammer them rocks. I think it was cool too. I honestly had chills, like just the landscapes and just seeing mm. places that were talked about before and the land of man, you know, that was all underwater in Lord of the Rings, you know, right. Southlands. You see the Southlands before and then it becomes Mordor. Like that's mm. how Mordor became. Even talking about the Dwar Dwarven city, you hear Gimli talking about, oh, it's great, it's beautiful, it's golden, and you're going to love it, all this stuff. And, you know, when you get there in the Lord of the Rings, or I guess the original trilogy, <laughs> It's like death and everyone's gone, right. you know, so it's cool to see it thriving. But yeah, I personally felt like they did a great job all around through everything. Fights. I would put this on par with like a Game of Thrones. I think they're really setting up a really cool, cool universe. I do see why people don't like it. I mean, I've been a Lord of the Rings fan from obviously the movies. What were we 12, 13 when those movies started coming out? Mm. I mean, I read Hobbit because of it. If you really think about it, you're like a dwarf. I but, didn't want to say it. But hold on. I'm like an elf. Yeah. You're my that's legless. <laughs> and I'm your kid. <laughs> yeah. Even now, watching them, that's us, man. You know, yeah. I, I think that's why I like them so much, because I'm just like, <laughs> I have the same body structure. I have the same kind of facial <laughs> hair. I mean, can I grow my hair long? Would it look bad? Yes. But technically, if I was in Middle Earth and I was born amongst the humans, they would say that my mother fucked a dwarf. And speaking of that fucking kid who stole... I'm not sure where this is going. 
who stole Sauron's sword. That oh fucking yeah, kid. He is half elf, and they cut his hair so badly just to make sure we didn't see his pointy ears. But he's fucking half elf. And the thing is, like, he's looking at the mom, right? The mom's as pale as me. They're looking at the elf, who is her friend. They're just friends. He looks more like the elf than he looks like the mother. You know what I hate about that? The fact that you said that? Jenny said the same thing. And I was like, no way, no way. And then they kissed, and I was like, oh my yeah. god. The bad yeah. haircut, though, ruined that kid for me. Because he had a little bit of redemption tale. But he really fucked things up, I guess. I, I hope that is a bigger thing, though, because now he got her sword, right? So he's going on his own path. And I really do hope that he is a half, like, elf, half human. I want to see more of a storyline on that. Because yeah. they didn't really talk about his dad. They kind of just like, oh, this is my mom and that's it. So I wonder if that's really a thing. He's so protective of this one woman. All the little groups, right? All the little different races. Which was your favorite and least favorite? What are they called? Bear bottoms? Harfoots. <laughs> Harfoots. <laughs> we also had the men across the sea. Right. Right. Men across the sea. We had the, the men sea. in the village who kind of were all kind of grimy and most of them turned out to be evil and flip sides real quick we had the orcs yeah. we had the traditional elves and we had the elves that were running around more so helping humans not necessarily your favorite character but your favorite section tough one i honestly wish all the hard foots died you know, i hated I, every scene that they were in i knew you were gonna say that and just to not make you seem like the asshole here it is a little funny that they put the stranger the most mysterious character with the most lame. We got to spice something up. Let's spice up the little barefoot people who literally do nothing but walk around. You look at the trilogy, they put Gandalf with them. And it gives you more of a reason to why Gandalf thinks so highly of the hobbits, you know? Right. Which, I guess they've changed their name over the years. I guess now they're the hobbits. Well, my guess was that maybe they're a race within a race, if that's a thing. Or... They kind of take the name Hobbit, kind of like Hermit, when the little fuck stop walking around for no goddamn reason. Yeah. All they want to do is, oh, we got to make our journey. <laughs> Why, motherfucker? You lose half of your people every time <laughs> you do it. They're so tiny. They're so <laughs> tiny and pathetic. What are you doing? I swore that they were going to stay there. This is a perfect place. Why are we leaving? It was green, lush, beautiful, food I thought they everywhere. Were turn into the Shire. 100% I thought was that was the Shire. Shire. I was like, oh my God, they're sitting on the hill. This is it. I'm mad their leader died. He was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. inevitable, right? He was old, anyways. I don't know how he kept up in the first place because anyone who walks too slow, ah, leave him to die. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty fucked up. That's a hard race to come into, you know? <laughs> you get left behind, you die. You have big feet, you know, yeah. and you're tiny. All you can do is hide. 9 out of 10 chance if I was born into Middle Earth, I would fall under, under a hot No, or, or no, don't do that to yourself. Dwarf. You're a dwarf. You're a dwarf <laughs> and you like to mine. I love the dwarves so much. Least so. favorite is them, obviously. And this is always back to the original too, but like, remember Sam and Frodo's relationship? I didn't like it. It was so oh. weird. Sam! Frodo! <laughs> it was a different time. You have to remember it wasn't 2020. I know, but every scene, it was always Sam! Frodo! Oh no! Too pathetic. And I got that same moment from them saying their goodbyes. I'm your best friend. Like, I was oh, like, you oh. leave Poppy alone. She's a <laughs> national treasure. Okay. So now that I'm done ripping them apart, <laughs> the pale white people are your favorite. Thinking about it. Who's your least favorite? And then we'll go into favorites because I, I think you'd want to talk about those pale white people. <laughs> I hate to say it. I think it's the humans in the village. Oh, yeah. The humans in the village. And I think that the mother and her child were a little kind of odd like in misplaced in this weird ass village and this poor elf who couldn't be the daddy because of racism had to come and mm. save everybody all the fucking time yeah i mean i liked his story when he was away from them yeah and the fight scenes were cool like with the orcs that battle was great but the people themselves i didn't like those characters she was fine I think it would have been better storytelling if she died, because then he would have took his bastard child and been like, by the way, your ears are pointy because of me. And that would have been a nice way to move that story forward. But yeah, I didn't love that. And then the white people, I don't know. The pale <laughs> creature, weird sorcerer people, they didn't really do it for me. They didn't really match. Their group was a little odd. I felt like it was like General Zod and his two minions, and it just didn't feel great. But yeah, my number one definitely is the dwarf. I just wish I got more action with the dwarves. But I understand that they're building their world. And like I said, the city didn't feel alive. So that hurt it for me. But that character, number one, I think he was so fantastic in that role. Like you truly believe not only was he a dwarf, but like you felt everything. 
his issues with his father that was the king and his emotions and then the way he would be like i gotta save the elves like, just the way he like would flip from like motherfucker i got fucking tricked his personality was so perfect and mm -hmm. that's what i think of when i think of a dwarf of like fuck this and it's like all right that quick like yeah it's gonna be all right yeah no they definitely did that well i enjoyed every scene with the dwarves honestly even just a little family things that they were going mm -hmm. through you know him and his wife was really like, great yeah it made mm -hmm. sense it yeah. definitely made sense i want to live with um, them i want to be adopted by them <laughs> right? you want to chase the kids in the, yeah, in I'll the background the, i'll work in the mines <laughs> they're probably the best group scene wise i think one of the most amazing scenes was the elves it was really just one elf and the men right but when they had the white horses and they were coming to save yeah. the day that was cool you know yeah. but i don't understand time at all mm -hmm. that's the one thing i'm like they just got in a boat flew across the sea and yeah. flew across valleys i had the same issue and i think the way i kind of made myself feel better was the scenes that we were seeing in episode three were actually happening in episode five they were all happening at the same time so like every scene we were seeing amongst each group of characters were not that same day so like them traveling happened in the episode before that was actually happening while the fight was happening. Like, they already had traveled. They had no other way to do it because they didn't want to tell story in between just to be like, oh, here's a scene of them almost seeing shore. Like, they didn't want to waste time with that. I think they did it well because I think what would have gone wrong with that if they did it the way you're saying, like, they cut in, like, certain scenes, I think you would have lost right. a lot of the story. Yeah. You would have lost a lot and you wouldn't have been as engaged with the characters. I mean, you know? look at the finale. We had no dwarf anything. Yeah. I mean, that to me was such a big character. Like all those scenes were for that little piece of stone. And yet that character didn't make the last episode. So yeah. They couldn't. It didn't make sense. They had to do it the way they did it. But I don't think we're done yet with them because, again, you see what happens to them in the future. So I wonder if we're going to see kind of the downfall of the mines and yeah. the, the Dwarven City. If so. I play World of Warcraft again and gain a bunch of more weight and lose my job and all that kind of stuff. I think it's Lord of the Rings because it really it brings <laughs> nostalgia for that. I actually am definitely downloading Shadows of Mordor. Mm. Remember that game? I do. I do. Yeah. And I'm rewatching all the old Lord of the Rings. But I, I just want to make a quick call out. Jenny did guess the fact that Sauron was that guy, the king. That's unbelievable. I would have never. Yeah. I would have bet money. Like, didn't make sense to the story. From the beginning, she was on it. She's like, no, something doesn't feel right. And I was like, no way. He's so nice. He's the king. I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Sauron did this. He's very manipulative. He can play at people. I was like, no way. And until this last episode, I really didn't believe it. And then she was like, no, wait. He had many lives. And he was mm. also, in one of his lives, a blacksmith. Oh, uh, shit. I wouldn't have known that. And she, again, called it out from, right. I think it was like episode three or four. See, I didn't dig that deep. Kind of happy I didn't because it's cooler now you telling me. It's like those oh shit moments. But... Yeah, I would have never guessed that, especially the fact that they had him be king for a short while and people were, like, clapping and cheering for him. I just thought he was a cool guy. Like, and he did such a good job at really mind-fucking us. He threw her in that pond. Yeah. And walked away and never came back. Yeah. yeah. Which, again, don't understand the travel time now. <laughs> no. Yeah. You gotta just ignore that. They flew on the big eagle, so we just didn't show it. Right. That's Rings of Power. Let's just quickly touch on Werewolf by Night a little more than we did, just because there's some Easter eggs we missed last episode. You want to just rattle them off? Number one. In the opening credits, we have two things. Gore has actually made an appearance. Now, this felt like a slap in the face to me. It was. They gave us comic book accurate gore on a mural, but you couldn't give it to us on the big screen. Not only was it given comment accurately, it was literally a panel from the books of how he gets stabbed backwards with thor's axe not the axe from the movies his axe he had before he was worthy to get the hammer you know in the comics that go across time not gore being a villain for three days and kidnapping children you know that movie you love so much love the movie damn it still love it comedy damn. it's a great movie next up Another, I guess, again, in the title sequence, Sasquatch actually makes an appearance. He was a member of Alpha Flight, a Canadian team of superheroes, including Wolverine. So this one, I kind of thought I was seeing it right, but I wasn't sure. But the Time Variance Authority, the TVA, the guards looked very similar to them. Couldn't tell because it's black and white. So I don't know if any of that makes any sense. I don't either, but they do look like the TVA. Does it suggest that maybe Werewolf by Night takes place in another reality within the multiverse or marvel is going cheap and they just reused some of the shit they already had 
The costumes, same costumes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Speculations. I'm in that article so I can write hate mail to them. Biggest thing in the comics, the reason why he turns into a werewolf is because he has a curse from the Darkhold. Okay. Borat? If the Darkhold was destroyed, Borat. Why is he still turning into Borat is on the way? Borat, Wanda, the Darkhold still exists, in my opinion. Either that or it's a different universe. Or motherfucker Mephisto the whole time behind everything. I hate the fact that Borat is Mephisto, but I saw like a rendered photo mm. of him as it, and it, it fits perfect. He might be Mephisto in Ironheart, which is odd, but I do think he's tied to all of this, where either he has a copy of the Darkhold, Agnes, her show might lead up to him with the Darkhold, or Wanda escape with the Darkhold, and he's gonna try and steal it from her the same way she tried to murder a child for it. All that kind of shit. Yeah. Did you watch the credits? Probably not. So remember they were in the room, her and Jack, they were locked together, and she breaks open her aunt's to go get, like, a key or whatever. So she takes out, like, her head and an arm. She's like, oh, yeah, my aunt, she was crazy. She said she was going to come back as a zombie one day. It was funny, waved off. In the credits, they focus in on the tomb, and a hand comes out of the tomb. Just a little, like, ha-ha moment. Unless live-action Marvel zombies eventually. I think eventually they will. I mean, zombies will come back. Zombies were popular for a big time. They'll circulate back. Maybe it was bigger than we thought. All right, let's just talk about it real quick. Endor. Not about it. Don't like it. It's really good. I just don't care. Really visually beautiful, well done, the story, acting, everything. Fantastic. Top tier. Just don't care that much. You've been keeping up with all the episodes? Yeah. No, when I'm watching it, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. When it's over, I don't think about it again. I fell off the second episode, the third episode. It's like a Star Wars heist show. Yeah. that's all. It's good, though. It's good. I just, like I said, there's nothing to look up or get into after it. But that's what TV's supposed to be. We expect too much now. It's in a franchise, yes, but we expect way too much. Yeah, maybe. Paneloids Podcast. Paneloids Podcast. Yeah, throw the bone onto the comics. Get out of there. Damn it. You see her in the background throwing the bone on there. She literally chucked it like that. Yeah, she does that. Sam! It screws up my videos. It's like I'm in Mordor. Frodo! I guess generally I didn't like any of the white people. Sam! Ruined one of my favorite villains. And Christian Bale, one of my favorite actors, as one of my favorite villains of all time. And that's what they give me. He did great to be shit on for seven minutes in the whole goddamn movie. Frodo! He knew his mom was a whore, you know? Wow. Penalty podcast.